You guys asked for it, M1 Ultra versus M2 Ultra. Has there really been that big of an upgrade? Well, in some of these real world tests, there were barely any difference, but in other ones, it was massive. Let's get started with the differences with the actual hardware itself. You can't really tell externally, but one update is that HDMI port allowing up to 8K resolution or 4K 240, and the overall display support is much more powerful. The other hardware difference is Wi-Fi 6E, and I did a full video on this showing that even if you don't have Wi-Fi 6E, even with Wi-Fi 5, the speed is way faster and with better range compared to Wi-Fi 6 in the old model. So that is a nice upgrade. Now I'm gonna make this more interesting for you because I'm not only gonna compare it price versus price, but I'm also throwing in the $5,800 M1 Ultra that I upgraded to 128 gigs of RAM and to the full unbinned M1 Ultra chip. So we have 48 core M1 Ultra compared to 60 core and the 64 core M1 Ultra, which normally more cores equals more power, right? Well, we'll take a look at that and we'll also talk about thermals and fan noise. Right off the bat, looking at Geekbench 6's single core score, the performance hasn't really gone up very much. And the difference we do have is because the M2 Ultra, the clock speeds are slightly higher. In terms of multi-core score, we are now above 20,000 for the much tougher Geekbench 6. That's a difference of roughly 17 and a half percent. And I honestly was expecting a little bit more in this test. Getting into graphics with 3 Mark's Wildlife Extreme, the M2 Ultra is more than 26% faster this year for the $4,000 model and 5% faster than our fully upgraded one. So you're saving money and getting better performance. And if we compare FPS per core, I was impressed here because the M2 Ultra does better than the M1 Ultra that has the 64 core. So we have less cores, and more performance per core. Now, maxing out the CPU with Cinebench R23, here we only see a 15.5% difference in terms of CPU performance, less than in Geekbench 6. With that, I also saw more power usage to get this performance, which once again shows that the M2 cores that are in the CPU, they're pretty much overclocked M1 cores. And because of that extra power and heat, what's gonna happen to our fan noise and temperatures? Well, running Cinebench, I got 85 degrees Celsius on the M2 Ultra, whereas the M1 Ultra only hit 65. That is a big swing in temperatures for the CPU. Now, that is because the fans in all of the Mac Studios, including the M2 Ultra, run at idle. Yes, they run at the slowest speed possible, and they don't really need to kick up. We just have a little bit more heat, and the M2 model is better in terms of coil wine. Now, I didn't have any issues with my M1 Ultra, but other people did. This one doesn't have any issues at all, and other people are reporting that they are not having it either. Now, for programmers using Xcode, here I was a bit disappointed to see that the performance improvements are pretty much non-existent. I mean, we have a few seconds saved, but definitely not worth upgrading to the M2 Ultra. And it might have to do with just the efficiency of the code. It's already so fast that we can't eke out any more performance. So keep that in mind. And in terms of Logic Music production, here I hit 320 tracks, only 15 more than the same price M1 Ultra and actually less than the one that I had upgraded to 128 gigs of RAM. So it seems like here we are more RAM limited. And if you work with Logic, it's definitely not worth upgrading. In terms of web browsing performance and web-based apps, Speedometer shows a big improvement with the M2 chip. We have faster memory involved as well. So you might not notice it because it is so fast already, but the difference is there. And as for Blender, holy moly, this is where people are gonna wanna upgrade. For the BMW project, literally, double the performance, and then our $5,800 one, pretty much double, it is right there. Now, how could this be possible when we have only about a 28% improvement if we calculate the hardware itself, 
the extra cores and then slightly higher frequency. Well, we previously had issues with scaling of the uh, M1 Ultra because of buffer issues. Well, Apple has reworked all of that and now it just screams in areas where it used to be bottlenecked. As far as the party tug test, once again, we are seeing literally a doubling of performance for the same price. It is absolutely incredible. Now for the photo editors out there using the latest version of Lightroom, here we are going from four minutes, 15 seconds down to three minutes and 15 seconds, roughly a 33, 35% improvement, which is really impressive. And Lightroom does use both the CPU and the GPU, really pushes the system. Now for certain Photoshop uh, tasks, the same thing happens, for example, for HDR. Here we went from 30 seconds down to 20 for the same price point, which is very impressive, pretty much just one year later. Now, of course, both of these are very quick, but if you're doing a ton of this or you're working on huge projects, a lot of layers, the performance improvement is impressive. Now, as far as video editing, I have a variety of tests here because that is what we do. And to stabilize a one minute clip, we went from seven seconds down to four. This is a huge, huge, huge improvement. Uh, even though seven seconds is still fast, four, you pretty much click, a few seconds later, you are done. Now, exporting a five minute 4K project with color grading, LUTs, and film grain, well, we went from a minute 17 down to 42 seconds. And that is because the M1 Ultra, even though it has dual encoders, it wasn't really able to use them. And that's why scaling was terrible. And we personally at Max Tech settled for an M1 Max, Max Studio. Well, now the difference is here. And for five minutes, literally taking 42 seconds is incredible. And the crazy thing is if you use DaVinci Resolve, well, here we go from 49 seconds down to 30. Can you imagine even just a few years ago saying that you can export five minutes and 30 seconds or 20 minutes in two minutes time? Rendering is no longer an issue. You can't even go get a drink anymore while you wait. Pushing the graphics to their limits in DaVinci Resolve using noise reduction, both spatial and temporal, this is a super tough task that tests the raw performance. And previously, we had 16 FPS out of 24, and with the $5,800 model, that was 20 frames per second. Well, now we can hit 28 for the $2,000 model, yes. That is a massive, massive improvement. Once again, showing that we had a major bottleneck with the M1 Ultra here. Now, my clip was 24 frames per second, so it did it perfectly live in real time, which is incredible. Um, and now it can actually do more than that. And if you spend the extra thousand bucks for the unbinned M2 Ultra, that will actually hit 30. Not a big difference. By the way, if you wanna see a full comparison between the 4,000 and then paying the extra thousand bucks, uh, let me know down in the comments and enable those notifications. Now, getting into tougher footage, for example, Red 8K Raw, playback is perfect. It is awesome. And then exporting this, I was shocked to see that the difference is pretty much negligible. Now, yeah, the $4,000 option is the same speed as a 5,800, and I don't really know why, because our graphics is almost maxed out, we're using a lot of CPU, there must be something with the codec or how um, we're working with these files that's limiting this. It just does not make sense. Now, in terms of ProRes, because we have those pros encoders and decoders, well here, the new M2 Ultra did this in 30 seconds compared to 41 and 43. Now, the numbers are so quick because these systems are so dang fast. Uh, but of course, if it's not a five minute project, if it's a 20, you can multiply that because we have absolutely no throttling. I've done tests from 20, uh, scaling down to five, scaling up to an hour, and the results are linear because we don't have throttling. So we're seeing those performance improvements. And with extra graphics performance, you just have more overhead for effects. And of course, this has LUTs and it's color graded as well. Now, in terms of Canon 8K RAW, this is a super tough codec and it plays back perfectly with the M2 Ultra. With the M1, it was not perfect. You would have to lower your resolution, your timeline. And as far as exporting, once again, it's just slightly faster, just like we had with the RED 
AK raw. So maybe on these crazy codecs, we have some other buffer limitation as well. I really don't know, uh, but it is still incredibly fast. So with that said, is it worth upgrading from the M1 Ultra to the M2 Ultra? Well, in a few cases, yes, especially for Blender 3D rendering or other 3D rendering applications, absolutely. But for other people like these tests that you guys saw, it might not be worth it at all, or only if you do a crazy amount of work and saving time will help you. The M1 Ultra is still very fast. And if you're looking to buy one right now, not upgrade, you could still get a crazy good deal on a used model from somebody that's trying to upgrade. So definitely go ahead and check out um, what you're able to find. Click that circle above and let me know if you wanna see the M1 Ultra bin versus unbin video. Check out one of those and I will see you in the next one.